Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business and <laughs> a lot of other things lately, it seems like. Uh, we got an action-packed, very information-heavy show today. This episode is going to be full of information regarding the RV world, whether you own one now, whether you're planning on buying one, whether you're going planning out your vacations for the year, whether you're planning on selling yours. doesn't matter where you are in your RV journey. This episode is going to be very, very important to you. Now, first off, Happy New Year to everybody. I know I'm six days, well, five and a half days late with that because I'm filming this on January 5th recording this for spotify amazon iheart and etc here on january 5th um god dang is 2023 gone and i am so glad 2023 was a very roller coaster ride a year for me um ups and downs i'll cover that later in the episode but what i want to really really start with today is the breaking news that came into me um, that unless something happens in the next 30 to 45 days, we will lose probably the number one selling toy hauler for 12 straight years starting in 2009, and that is Attitude Toy Haulers. Eclipse Recreational Vehicles is within weeks, from what I'm understanding, of completely going out of business <clears throat> it appears that again unless something changes drastically it appears that there isn't enough investors that want to pay the premium to take over the business I talked to one guy who was a potential buyer an investor into it and he he's the one that gave me the information and then his alternate partner she uh, who was who's another person that has run a manufacturing plant not in the RV business but uh, in an in another industry and uh, they were telling me that they actually submitted an offer to buy it back in October and it was turned down It's sad. It, it, it actually breaks my heart a little bit because there were a lot of bad things about Attitude, Iconic, and Stellar toy haulers. And it wasn't the look of them or the functionality. It was really the company was crappy towards dealer service departments and towards a lot of dealer principals, a lot of dealer owners too. Dallin was a fabulous guy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bagging on them. I'm not bra I'm not talking crap about them. It's just a fact of life. If it, you, you couldn't get any warranty claims fixed. So what dealerships used to do, so give you guys an idea. First, no, you know what? Let's go back a little bit first. Let's go back to the inception. So I'm going to give you a little inception, a little background if you don't know who Attitude Toy Haulers was. If you don't know who Iconic and, Iconic and Stellar was. So this manufacturer was actually started roughly about 2007 through really the it didn't really come to fruition till 2009. How would you like to start an RV manufacturer in the middle of the great great recession? <laughs> I mean there's some 2006s out there. There's some 2005s, don't get me wrong, but it really didn't get going till after Weekend Warrior went out of business. Uh, the market share for Eclipse RV back in 05, 06, 07, and 08 was not nearly what it was in 09. And it just seemed, I don't, and I don't know who got there first. I don't know if it was Kevin Flores that turned it around. I was good buddies with him for a long time until he left and went to um, another manufacturer a couple of years ago. Um, but Dallin surrounded himself with incredible marketers and then the one thing that would basically screwed every dealer up was he was the only manufacturer the only manufacturer 
in the industry that went to the power sports industry, bought a prototype of a side-by-side. -side. Back then, the biggest was the Polaris Razor 1000. And he would build his toy haulers around the biggest, baddest side-by-side -side in the industry at the time. When the Can-Am X3 came out, the four-seater, he went and got one and built every floor plant around the four seat Can Am X3. Forest River, terrible toy hauler division. Doesn't matter if it's XLR, doesn't matter if it's any of those places. They're always behind the times to attitude. Now, that being said, in the last three years, Somebody woke up at Forest River, somebody woke up at Keystone for the carbon and the fusion, and someone woke up at Grand Design and said, if we don't get our ass in gear, we're going to lose a ton of market share. And at the time, it was Genesis Supreme, RV, and Add Two Toy Allers. Those two manufacturers had the big umbrella companies running for their life scared they were going to lose market share in that industry. Now that all being said, that pretty much put dealerships in a really bad position because the way Attitude Toy Haulers treated dealers was just garbage. You were a piece of trash. Unless you were in the inner circle, uh, like the Baruti family and like uh, you know um, uh, Frank DeGallis who and Mike Thompson's RV, uh, Niall at Best RV, unless you were really, really tight with him, and just took anything and everything that down through your way. You were a pile of crap. If you needed something done under warranty. They wouldn't cover it. What are you talking about? That's normal. So what? De so dealerships knew that. Attitude toy haulers. Iconic and stellar toy haulers. They had you by the brass balls. Because if you didn't have attitude on your lot, or Stellar, or Iconic, if you didn't have any of the Eclipse brands on your lot, you didn't even get the at-bat. You didn't even get the chance to show a customer a toy hauler. Because that marketing team was at NASCAR events, motocross, BMX, skateboarding events. They were at firefighter uh, fundraisers, first responder fundraisers. These guys were superior marketers to anybody in the industry on the manufacturing side. And you knew, excuse my language, but if you didn't have one of the three brands on your lot, you were fucked. You weren't selling toy haulers. Didn't matter. It didn't matter if you could prove to them that something fit. You were fucked. You weren't even going to get a look. Now, does it mean everybody that walked into the dealership lot bought an attitude? No. A lot of times, they'd end up in a stealth, a sandstorm, an XLR, a, a carbon, a fusion, um, a work and play. But everybody was in a rush to catch up with Attitude. Attitude was the... It, I'll put it to you like this, guys. And a lot of you will understand this. Attitude had built such a huge brand and following that it was the only other brand recognizable more for a long period of time than Attitude Toy Haulers. Winnebago. That's it. Now, a lot of the reason why Attitude Toy Haulers has failed in the last couple of years is because of dysfunction. And on top of that, Dallin has passed away. Dallin passed away a couple of years ago due to complications during COVID. He was an older guy. He wasn't young. It wasn't like he was 50 years old. He was in his 70s, if I remember right. 
I might have aged him a little more than he is was, but he went at hard for a long time, man. I mean, he trying to run a, a factory that and, and and staying a step ahead, up to five steps ahead of everybody else. That takes dedication. It's like Elon Musk dedication. So I'm not bagging on the guy at all. I love the guy. Him and I were not friends. But every attitude dinner at Whoa, it's really windy outside. Um after every one of the Pomona show, the the big California RV show, he used to have a dinner for all the dealers. And he could pick me out of a crowd. Cuz I was good at selling his stuff. I was not a bro. I didn't you know have tattoo I don't have tattoos everywhere and you know like I used to have a salesperson friend that couldn't look anybody in the eyes and like what's up bro I wasn't like that with people I was very I, I'm like I am right now very straightforward methodical I could tell you everything about an attitude toy hauler it was a good it, it was a great unit man I, I'm sad that it's going away I'm pissed off now, of course, that's if things don't turn around. I don't know if they will. I mean, it's just like Barber RV. I worked for Barber RV in Ventura, California for four and a half years, if I remember correctly. It's like three and a half, four and a half years, somewhere in between there. My timeline gets screwed up sometimes when I'm doing just off-the-cuff stuff like this. But I loved working there. The owner dragged it into the ground. It closed its doors. About two weeks ago. It's gone. 52 years in business. Gone. Poof, out. Bad management. Thinking they could do things for cheaper. Or get cheaper labor. Or get cheaper this. Or get cheaper that. How many times the Attitude Toy Haulers get nailed by INS? Because... <laughs> They're trying to have illegals work for him. Happened a few times. Joanne, Dallin's wife, went to jail at least once. So, you know, the, the, the toughest part about losing a manufacturer like that is it shrinks the industry down and stops innovation. Now, the good news is is it doesn't look like Genesis Supreme RV is going anywhere. Pablo pretty much is losing money at this point to just build rigs because it seems like his attitude. Now, I, I want to get him on this podcast. I can't get him on this podcast. I've been busting my butt to do it because I really want to talk to him. Because by my math, he ain't making money the way he's building stuff right now. And if he is, he's making very, very, very little. And I want to know, is that in response that he wants to step on everybody's throat and shove a fire hose down Forest River's mouth and turn it on? Does he want to shut... Is his goal to shut down the California Forest River plants that build these the Sandstorm, the Stealth, and Shockwave toy haulers? I sure hope so, because I love stuff like that. Would I want Shockwave and Stealth and Sandstorm to go away? No. Of course not. I'm upset right now that Attitude, Iconic, and Stellar are going to be going out the door. I'm pissed about that. Because of the way it's going out the door. It's fun to see manufacturers compete and have competition where they have to step up and figure things out. But still a sad day about Attitude. I almost want to give it a moment of silence because, I mean, I know I, I know I wasn't treated the best and no owner or manager or service guy was treated well by them unless you knew him very well. But damn, man. I mean, we're losing brands left and right. I mean, we're, we're going to lose another, we're going to lose 40% of the brands out there. Guys, if you don't think so, I'm going to tell you that brands like Grand Design, they're not immune to chops. It would not shock me today 
if they got out of the travel trailer business, canceled Imagine and canceled Transcend. Wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me if they went down to solely the reflection and the momentum. Wouldn't shock me. One bit. My old boy Colby, love him, owns Alliance RV. Would not shock me if he shuts his doors by summer. Wouldn't shock me. Stupid decisions, stupid emails, dumb things that RV factories do because they cut their nose off to spite their face. They shoot themselves in the foot because, not because they don't know any better, but because their ego's too big. Your ego should never, never, ever get in the way of business. Not for the survival of an industry. The one deal that really screwed over Attitude Toy Haulers was the ego of not getting the foresight that your shit was too expensive the days of ripping dealers heads off with tariffs and surcharges left a long time ago and you guys chose not to do anything about it I personally here at this location in Pahrump, Nevada, lost $147,000 in, lo in losses. I took $147,000 in losses to sell four Attitude Toy Haulers. And I have one left on the lot, and I'm probably going to take another $20,000 loss on that. Because that's out of touch Eclipse got after Dallin passed away. That's the ego of his wife, unfortunately. And just the lack of wanting to be more or do more. So, reality is it's a very sad, sad day. <clears throat> now on to RV interest rates. I keep getting asked about this. Everybody's assuming rates are going to go down from the Fed. So I, I made a bet with a, a, we'll call him a colleague of mine. It's for a dollar because he can't afford much more. I'd bet more if he had the money. That the Fed is not going to lower their interest rates. That if RV interest rates go down, it's going to be voluntary by the banks and credit unions. Okay. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Right now, Huntington National Bank has lowered their rate uh, about, well, I should say about seven months ago, lowered their rate from 899 to 799 They lowered it 1%, and they gobbled up a ton of business. While U.S. Bank was at nine and a half, nine nine nine, Bank of the West, which is now BMO, was around <clears throat> eight and a half to eight seven four to nine and a half, depending on the level and their silly program. Uh, the five biggest credit unions in the country were hovering around ten percent. Huntington was at seven nine nine for prime credit. So dealers were using them left and right. It was crazy. Their growth in the amount of loans they have taken this in 2023 were astronomical compared to previous years because they were soaking up all the interest rate business. But unless it's voluntary by the banks, they're not going to do it. So U.S. Bank today lowered their rate from 9.5 to 8.99. That made the news. Oh, they lowered it half a percent. Yeah, still didn't make a fucking dent. 
it, it doesn't for every quarter point it saves you a dollar 70 in the industry it doesn't do anything it doesn't make a difference it doesn't make a dent so rv interest rates are going to stay stagnant if they lower interest rates they're going to lower them very little, a tenth of a point here, a fifth of a point there. They're not going to lower it fast because if they did, it would just, def it would completely, it would be basically like saying, screw it, we're just going to lower the rate because it's an election year. No, it ain't going to happen. You could put as much, Trump could walk in today as President of the United States and go to Powell and Powell will just give him the middle finger. Like, you come up with a way to get to 2%, and I'll do it. You get housing costs down, I'll do it. You get energy prices down, I'll do it. But until then, we're not doing it. And that's how they're going to be. The Fed is going to be that way for a long time. So buckle your seatbelt, go in for the ride, enjoy the pricing right now. Because pricing is stupid. I just did an ad campaign for the total of seven stores that we have. Six in California, the one here in Nevada. And I had a guy come in and say, you said you'll show me the invoice on, on that travel trailer. And I showed it to him. He goes, how much is the, the factory covering of that $8,000 loss? And I go, none. We're eating it ourselves. Because there's no factory incentives. I talked about this a lot. Guys, there's no factory incentives in the RV business. The factory does not participate in helping us move aged inventory. Period. And by the way, 500 bucks on an $8,000 loss is not helping with a loss. So screw you guys. If you're a manufacturer, screw you. If you're a rep for an RV company, don't even react to this screw you you're not even participating even close to what dealers are losing and if you don't think so ask marcus limonis at camping world he's the ceo of camping world from what i understand his senior management meeting was basically i'm gonna write a hundred million dollar check we need to sell inventory They are in a position where they're willing to lose $100 million selling inventory right now. My boss is willing to take eight to $10,000 losses on travel trailers that invoice for thirty two grand. And is anybody taking advantage of it right now? No. Why? Because everybody keeps saying interest rates are going to go down. Believe me, dealerships want interest rates to go down. Dealerships do not want rates to stay high because when interest rates come down, we're going to raise our prices and we're going to go back to making money and being profitable. That's what's going to happen, guys. Period and report. If you are solely a price buyer and you wait till rates drop, you... <laughs> You're defeating the purpose of why interest rates were high. Yeah, you can get mad at me. Oh, this kid don't know anything he's talking about. Yet I've been in this for 15 years. I've been through not one recession, but two recessions. And I've been through three interest rate hikes prior to this. We were selling interest rates as dealerships in 09 and 10 at 16% interest over 12 years. There wasn't even 20 year loans available on these things because banks were scared half to death to even freaking lend. 20 year terms were less than 1% of the loans written. So imagine 16% in 12 years? How do you make a payment affordable? You lose your rear end, you eat your own shorts for a while. I had a cup of noodles every day. I ate for a dollar a day. I'd go down to the McDonald's dollar menu and I would get a McChicken sandwich for a buck and I would cut it in half 
One half would be for lunch, one half would be for dinner. That's how broke people were during the Great Recession. That's how broke I am right now. But the difference is back then, I was scared out of my mind. Now it's like, well, I have enough information to know that there's nothing I can do to control it. All I can do is educate you. That's all I can do. All I can do is sit back, give you an education, let you know how things are, and you either believe me or you don't. If you don't believe me, you're going to pay more money in the long run. If you do believe me, now you got a conversation to have with your family. Is it the right time? Are we willing to pay more down the road because it's just not the right time? You know, do we have the income now? Is is our job secure? Is is you know our housing situation settled? Th those are the questions, right? Th they really are. Like, if if you got kids and you've been wanting to buy a travel trailer, right now it's like. Some of us, a lot of us, are like trying to decide whether to pay rent or the mortgage or go buy groceries. And if you don't think that's not going on, that's probably half of our country right now. Half of our country, doesn't matter what the income level is, is saying they're trying to make decisions on which bill to pay because they have to feed their family. Now, does that everybody know? But that's what the conversation's about, right? The conversation at the table right now is, do can we take advantage of it? For a lot of people, they're in position to do it. I'm going to say, I talk to at least 15 people every two weeks that have the ability and have, the, have plenty of room to do it, and they're scared to do it. Out of their mind, crazy scared. What are you scared of? It's an election year. Who cares who the President of the United States is? They're not going to change anything. And if you think they are going to change something, you're insane. Trump can't save the country. Bobby Kennedy can't save the country. We have to save the country. We have to save the country by stop spending money on stupid shit. Sorry. I know I sound like an absolute dick when I say it. And I understand that I sound like a dick when I say it. And I'm not talking about RVs. I'm not going to talk about travel trailers. I'm not even talking about boats. I'm talking about 1100 freaking dollar payments on cars. We don't even have $1,100 payments on travel trailers. They're still like $300, $350 a month. And you're going out spending $1,100 on a car? Come on, man. Are you that dense? You could have four travel trailer payments for the price of a brand new truck payment plus insurance. Why aren't you going out and getting, why are you not going out and spending money you can afford? I know why. You're scared. You're scared that it, because everybody keeps telling you prices are going to go up. Cars are going to, the car market's going to go insane again. Oh, the mortgage, the mortgages are going to go insane because they're going to lower rates. So they're going to raise prices on houses. Who fucking cares? It's not a race to see who can go broke first. It is a race to tell everybody that's telling you that blah, 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 blah about the real estate market. Fuck you. I'm waiting. I don't care if the, the, the market's going to go up. I need to have be in a position where I can buy a house, live in it, enjoy it, and actually sleep at night because I know I can make my mortgage payment comfortably. Oh, but you know, that brand new Cadillac Escalade looks so great. 
and I make four grand a month, so it's easy to make eleven hundred and fifty dollar payment or two thousand dollar payment. Get the hell out of here, man. What are you guys thinking? This is the problem. Not the RV market. The RV market and the boat market are still in the same boat. You lost $116 of buying power on travel trailers with the interest rate hikes. So instead of it being $200, it's $316. But a $400 car payment has turned into a $1,500 car payment. Come on, guys. We got to use our brains here. We really do. Last thing I'm going to talk about real quick is about this organic um, um, organic growth when it comes to YouTube or any kind of social media following. Unless you're doing something like shaking your butt or paying for a service to promote your your material. And yes, men can shake their butt too. It's not just ladies, it's men too. Men. Unless it's instead of saying shaking the booty, I should say, unless you're offering thirst traps or you hired a marketing team to market your videos. It's extremely difficult to grow organically with anything. I'll give you a great example. My Facebook page. Levingston RV Services, the Facebook page, has 2,600 followers. Actually, technically, if you include the likes of the page, it's 2,900, close to 3,000. Okay? Okay. This December, I got 39,000 people that organically watched videos. It took two years to get there. Now, if you go look at the pro videos I paid for promotion, there's 17 million views. Now, I know that's hard to understand, but it's the same thing with Instagram. It's the same thing with TikTok. In fact, TikTok's gotten worse. There was a time where I went viral every three to five days with content on TikTok. Now, unless I pay for it with TikTok Promote, I don't get past four or 500 views. <clears throat> We are in an age where if we're not paying money to have people watch our content, it is virtually improbable, not going to say impossible, but improbable for you to grow organically. Okay, so YouTube really is the last haven. So I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples of this, okay? So I have two monetized channels, and I'm working on two others right now. So I'm going to go to HBRV Lifestyle real quick. And I've had the channel, or I should say I used the channel to grow the RV, uh, to grow Beaumont RV Inks back into their website, back in, here I'll tell you the date, when I actually started this thing, because I forget the date, I know it tell me I have a birthday, and I just don't remember when the birthday was, <laughs> kind of a little crazy, Hold on, just bear with me, folks. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, please. Bear with me here. You can hear my mouse scrolling because I have an old school mouse. Okay, we're getting to the nitty gritty. 
And there it is. Okay. So the first video I released was May 26th, 2021. So it'll be three years in May. Okay. If, if, if you go back and I'm going to go look at my analytics real quick. Okay. And, and the reason why I'm telling you this stuff is because it's 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 very very difficult for me to believe anybody that organically grows a million view a million subscribers in a month without help or without doing a bunch of thirst traps it's just hard for me to it's hard for me to believe it because It, it just it just doesn't make any sense to me um, 21 okay try and get sorry I'm, I'm, I'm getting there guys okay here we go um, it just doesn't make sense to me so in 2021 from May of 2021 um, To December 31st, 2021, I had 28,000 views, 841 hours of watch time, and 695 subscribers. Okay. Now, I didn't pay for any of this stuff. I figured out a lot of stuff about shorts and, and, and stuff like that, right? Now, let's fast forward to um, 2022. Now, in 2022, I started posting more. In 2022, I received 820,000 views. This is year two. This is my first actual full year on YouTube. 3,300 subscribers. So I reached 4,100 subscribers. And I had 21,000 21, hours of watch time. I joined the, the partner program in February of 22. And it, I went through this phase where after I got monetized, it just slow burned worse. So growing organically without word of mouth, without people sharing the content is very hard, especially for somebody that's working with no money. So keep that in mind as you listen to this podcast that I don't spend money on it. So I appreciate anybody that shares my story and shares this information so we can organically grow. So until next time, be safe, and uh, we'll see you guys in a couple of days.